This episode is brought to you by Gen Next Wealth, a fee-only financial planning firm helping first-generation six-figure income earners navigate their finances. If you are in this situation and you're the first person in your family to make a six-figure income, and now you've come to the place where you need help with the financial decisions that you have, please don't hesitate. Give us a call. We're available for you at www.gennextwealth.com. You can go there and schedule a free consultation to talk about your personal financial situation. Hey there, I'm Emlyn Miles Mattingly, your host for the Minority Money Podcast. I'm glad you're here. You know why? Because this is the place you can come to get your weekly finance, family, and fitness motivation, not only to experience success in those areas for yourself, but also to help others in our community achieve greatness too. Super happy that you're on the show with me. So let's jump right in. Have you ever been doing something and you do it so well that you stop doing it? I mean, like it's it's one of the habits that you had or it's one of the things that you've been trying to come up with and you do it. And when you do it, things get better. Like if you were trying to lose weight, you were able to lose weight. If you were trying to save money, you were able to save money. If you're trying to make changes about your life, you were able to do it. And with that one thing that you did, you did it so good that you stopped doing it. So as you all know, welcome back to the show. This is the Minority Money Podcast. I am your host, Emlyn Miles Mattingly, where we are changing the complexion of wealth. So today we're going to talk about three magic questions. And, and the reason why I talk about these three magic questions, if you've listened to the last episode, it was about it's okay. Sometimes you don't hit your goals. Sometimes things come up. Sometimes life happens and, and that's okay. So today what we want to do is we wanted to touch on these three magic questions. And, and I'm going to tell you then them right now, but the the three magic questions as you think about them and how they can apply, how you can apply these to your life. So the first question that uh, I think you would want to ask yourself at any time you're looking back, and and I think it's so important for us to look forward, right, for where we want to go, but look back to measure how far we've come. And I'll say it again: it's always good to keep your eye on where you want to go, but you always have to remember where you came from and how far you've come. So one of the things that I like to do on you know. I don't do it as often as I should, but I know this is something that you can do either on a monthly basis, you can do it on a quarterly basis, um, semi-annually, maybe even annually. I don't know if I would do it every week because it probably doesn't give you enough time to uh, know what's working and what's not, but I think on a monthly basis, it would definitely work. So these are the three questions. Question one, what am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? Now, this is a personal question, right? You have to ask yourself this. You're doing something right now that you probably shouldn't be doing, but you're still doing it. The next one, what am I doing that I can and should be doing? Says, what am I'm sorry, let me go back. What am I not doing that I can and should be doing? What are you not doing that you know you should be doing that if you did it, it would help you out a tremendous amount, but you know you should be doing it and you're not doing it. And then the third question is, what do I do well that I need to make sure that I keep doing? Okay. So we're going to jump into all these questions real quick. And I just wanted to throw those out there. And I, I get excited about these kind of episodes because it really, this, this can apply in so many different areas of your life, right? It can apply with your money. It can apply with your family. It can apply with education. It can apply with all the topics that we deal with on the show. So today let's talk about that first thing. What am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? Now, this could be a number of things, right? When you think about things that you shouldn't be doing, like I always tell people to 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 look introspectively, look at yourself. I don't think that the answers that you need for uh, for things that you want to accomplish come from the outside. I think a lot of times that will come from the inside. So you know what you're doing that you shouldn't be doing. Usually this is things that self-sabotage, right? If you've been trying to uh, lose weight, right, you know... Buying a whole bunch of <laughs> snacks and having them in the house probably ain't going to help you do that. So why do you keep doing it? You shouldn't be doing that, right? If the goal is to get to something else, probably shouldn't be doing that. If you continue to spend without looking at where you're spending your money or how you start spending or even having a plan for your money, this is before we even get to the budget, but you know that you can't go by this store, you can't go by this certain place because every time you go there, you end up buying something, even if it's a little something. And if saving is what you want to do, you have to do things and prevent yourself from going to places or things that are going to trigger you to do the things that you shouldn't be doing. 
Um, one thing that I'll say, and I, I think I've said it before on the show, but I want to say this, the common denominator of success, what you'll find in successful people is there's a common denominator and that common denominator is successful people are willing to do the things that unsuccessful people aren't willing to do. So find out what you're doing that you shouldn't be doing and stop immediately. Stop doing it. Next thing, question number two, what am I doing? What am I not doing that I can and should be doing? So I think this one is is probably one of the tougher ones. And, and the reason why I say that is because there's some things that you're not doing that you can do that you should be doing. And and I always like to use just the 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 example of you know going to the gym or saving money or um, you know finishing your degree whatever it is that you may have I, and and I think about that and as you're sitting there and you're thinking what am I doing that what am I not doing right and 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 so I think this is something that you can spend some time like writing this stuff down and and there's something powerful that happens when you write things down but write down some of the things that you're not doing that you know you can do and they can be super easy things one of the things i was having a conversation with someone at the gym the other day and so we were talking about you know gym motivation commitment those type of things right and so what i said was if you're not doing something let's take going to the gym for example in this one if you're not going at all what is the first thing that you can do OK, so what we talked about was something simple. What do you do? OK, I know what I want to do in the morning. I want to go to the gym. I have my time that I go work out. Now, how do I remove all of the obstacles out of my way so that I can make sure that I do this activity that I sh that I can do that I'm not doing that I should be doing? Right. So the first thing that you want to do is I always do this. I would set my gym clothes out. OK, so I take my gym clothes and I put them all in my little spot in my room before I go to bed. So my shoes are there, my socks, my tights, shorts, sweats, sweatshirt, beanie, all done. Only thing I have to do now is get out of the bed. And so the other thing that I was doing was when I first started working out, I don't know about any of you people that are listening that might not be a morning person. There is a such thing like where people aren't morning people. So if you're not a morning person, I wasn't a morning person. So what did I do? I took my pre-workout, right? Set it right next to my bed. So I would go to sleep, <laughs> wake up in the morning when my alarm went off. And just like most people, I didn't want to get up. There's something about that bed holding me hostage. There's nothing better than a warm bed on a cold day. And there's been some days where it's been, you know, as low as 29 degrees out here in California. And that's California cold. I understand there's places that are colder, but 29 for us is cold. So what happened was... <laughs> After I take the drink of my pre-workout, I laid back down. I was like, you know what? I, I can't, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm just going to drink this and lay down. Well, guess what the pre-workout pre -workout does? Well, it starts making my ears tingle. It starts making my face tingle. It starts, making, and you can't sleep when your face is tingling and your ears are tingling. So what do I do? I get up. Now, what's the next thing? I don't have to go look for my clothes because they're already there. So I get my clothes. Those are done. Set up, get dressed. Then after that, I'm in the kitchen. I go in the kitchen. I have my bottle. Uh, of water that I'm going to take with me. So I have a, I usually take lemon water with me. So I have that sitting out already, have the lemons in the refrigerator, cut those up, put those in there, um, fill it up with water. And then I'm out the door. And the reason why I'm able to do that, because what I was not doing was setting out my stuff. What I could do was set out the stuff and get prepared the day before. That's what I should be doing. So that was an example of that one. Number three, what do I do well? that I need to make sure I keep doing. And this is how we started the episode, right? What are you doing so well? It works so well that you stop doing it. And one of the things that, you know, I think, um, I think that we can, we can find a lot of different things that we do well, uh, if we pay attention to what we're doing. And I think checking in with yourself, right. And, and making sure that the things that you're doing well and that you keep doing, you need to do them. So I'll talk about this and I talk about this a lot. So you guys might get tired of hearing about me talking about meditating and journaling. Right. But it is something that has really changed my life and it's changed my life one day at a time, one journal entry at a time. Um, one meditation session at a time. I found out so much stuff. So what am I doing well? I think I meditate well. Now, I know that's kind of weird. What do you mean meditate well? It means I've been consistent with it. I've been finding the time to do it. And so when you find something that you're doing well, I, I've found little tweaks and stuff that you can do, little hacks to get you where you need to be. So with my meditation, I've done this and I've checked. If I, um, 
when it comes to meditation, if I don't meditate before I get out of the bed, this is just me. Now I've meditated in my room. I've meditated on the floor. I meditated on, uh, in our office. I've, there's several places that I tried to meditate, but for me, the best place to do it is as soon as I wake up. So my mind is the clearest. There's nothing running through it. I don't have anything else to do. I just sit there and I do my meditation then. Now, when it comes to my journaling, I found that my best time for journaling was after the gym. As soon as I get back from the gym, I don't, before I shower, before I do anything, I read my Bible and then I journal. The reason why I track what I do and when I do it is because when you do something well, right? I started to see the results from journaling. I started to see the results from everything that I was doing. If you hear the kids in the background, they're home today. So just, you know, bear with me. We got kids. It is what it is. But, um, you know, I would always think, okay, now I've been doing this. I'm seeing the results from my meditation. I'm seeing the results from my journaling. I'm seeing changes. And then I started to love the changes and forget about the work and the progress that I was on, the journey that I was on, the meditation journey that I was on, the journaling journey that I was on. And so what I'm saying is in the midst of what you're doing well, make sure that you understand that is what you need to keep doing. If you got some measure of success with what you were doing, continue doing that same thing. As boring and as, as regimented as it may seem, the results is what you're doing it for. I'm going to leave with this story. I have one last story for you. So uh, a couple of years back, I got a nutritionist, right? So I, I think, you know, I've been working out for a little while, yada, 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 right? So I got a, uh, I got a nutritionist and he was putting together um, um, some, some workouts for me. Shout out to Zoltan if you hear this. I don't know if you listen to the show, but if you are, you know, shout out to you. So we got together a couple of years back. And so he was putting together some workouts for me and he puts together these workouts and, you know, and, and the food and everything. And I remember there was about, so we've been, we've been together, we've been working together since we started in October of 2020. I still have um, my measurements and my height and weight from the day that we met. And we were going through these workouts and I was like, man, we keep doing the same thing. It's like these basic lifts. And then there's a few other things that you add to it, but it keeps doing these basic lifts. Now, every time I went to see him, he was measuring me, right? And weighing me. So we'd see where the inches were coming from and what was going on. And we would just do that. And so I had goals on the inches that I wanted to lose and goals on where I wanted to lose them from and whatnot. What happened was I would always complain about the same stuff that we were doing. And you know what he would always remind me of? He said, well, every week you come, you are continuing to get results. He said, what do you want? Do you want the results or do you want to do these workouts that you see other people doing online that they're only showing you a piece of and they're not showing you the other stuff that they're doing? He said, because everyone that's does, you know, lift weights has to do these base lifts and they have to do them at a high level and you are doing them at a high level and are continuing to grow. You're getting stronger, you're losing more inches and you're gaining more muscle. What more do you want to do? And so what I'll say is this, the boring stuff that you're doing is going to get you the big results, boring stuff, big results, boring stuff, big results. That's all we got for today. As you all know, this is the Minority Money Podcast. I am your host. Uh, until next time, we are changing the complexion of wealth. Another great showdown, but it doesn't have to stop there. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on whatever podcast app you're listening on now and give it a good rating, would you? If you feel really connected to the podcast, which I hope you do, find our Facebook community, Minority Money VIP, to support and be supported by others just like you. And again, we're glad to have you. While this podcast is meant to inspire and motivate you to live your best life, it can't be your complete one-stop shop. I know, I know, that really sucks. But I don't know anything about your specific situation. So please reach out to an attorney or a CPA, or you can reach out to me, a financial planner, to help you with your specific situation. To get a hold of us, please reach us at fan at Minority Money Podcast. That's F-A-N at Minority Money Podcast, so we can get to know you there. Thanks for being here and until next time, 